This is a hot seat. Things are happening. People can criticize. Whichever the organization you work, you are dealing with three M's, men, material and machinery. We don't do any abductions right now and we have allowed the media freedom. Anybody can say anything. Those days this was not available. Well, I was born in Polonnaruwa, and I studied in Polonnaruwa as well as several other schools, like Kuliapiti Central College and the Vayangoda Central College. I entered the Faculty of Engineering in 1973 and graduated uh, with the honors degree in civil engineering. And then I was uh, further, I got an uh, education in Belgium, Catholic University of Leuven, uh, doing my master's degree. I'm a chartered engineer and fellow of Institute, Institute of Engineers, Sri Lanka, fellow of Institute of Management and chartered environmentalist and uh, member of Institute of Environmental Professionals. So that's my professional and academic career. I'm married, I have two children. My son lives in Melbourne and he's a software engineer. And my daughter is a chartered uh, accountant working in Sri Lanka. I'm blessed with one grandchild. So I have a long career in the irrigation department uh, for nearly 20 years and then I resigned from, retired from government service and worked in International Water Management Institute and Japan Bank for International Cooperation for 11 years. And I was chairman for many organizations such as Geological Service and Mines Bureau and the Foreign Employment Bureau, Central Environment Authority, Sri Lanka Land Reclamation and Development Corporation, and uh, National Water Supply and Drainage Board. From there also I resigned. And after the new government came into being, and I was appointed as the Secretary, Ministry of Urban Development and Water Supply. And from there now I am here as the Secretary of Defence. How is that shift to be your Defence Secretary of the country? How <coughs> I think shift is very comfortable for me because I, you know, if you take my career in water supply and drainage board, I had 39 trade unions, but here I don't have a single trade union. So trade unions are not that easy to manage, you know, always they have demands and you have to fulfill the demands. So next year another set of demands comes. So that's a kind of a very, very tough job. But uh, one of the important thing, the difference between other institutions and the defense, defense is a disciplined place. I have militaries and also another department, civil defense, civil security department. So I think they are all, you know, very well disciplined. They work on the command and they comply. And then after that, if they have any grievances, they can come back and, you know, complain about it. So I would rather say in whichever the organization you work, you are dealing with three M's, men, material and machinery. If you can add also M, another M is money. Money needs for all of these things. So therefore, wherever you work, you deal with all these three basic resources. If you can manage those resources well, any place is okay. But this is a hot seat, you know. Things are happening and various problems crops up and we have to respond. Certain things we need to be proactive, certain things we have to be reactive. So we have to identify how we are going to deal with the security. So I don't see, I think I'm comfortable in the sense of subject and the subject matter and the type of things that I have to handle. I'm okay with it. With, with the new government, uh, the executive movement, uh, there is a notion among, among the public defense mechanism has weakened, the national security is now not the biggest priority. And they look at you <coughs> as the point man uh, for that. The national security is now not the priority, suddenly we have, we have you know, there's a lapse in it. Uh, how do you respond? Yeah, well I think, you know, the, the conflict period and the transition period and the period we started after January 8th is to three different eras. Right? 
conflict period, you can, everybody sees the military is the priority. And they were given all the resources to combat terrorism. So then that military was strong. And probably the, the people, men and the officers of the militaries, they are very comfortable with the resources that they are at their disposal. Then came the transition where we didn't have much combat operation, but there were some surveillance and other issues. And establishing the peace, we had certain military operations were there. But uh, mostly the military was uh, mostly involved in, uh, you know, re 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 rebuilding those affected areas, construction work, and similar such infrastructure development. But when it come to uh, after January 8th, the complete scenario was different because we addressed the infrastructure issues, but we didn't address the issues of the Tamil or the Muslim or Sinhalese communities living in these affected areas. So our role has changed. So our presence, you don't feel it in the field because we are more confined to our barracks. And then whenever they want anything to be done, particularly disaster situation, or flood situation, natural disasters, the Sala matter. So I think we, we, we get mobilized and we look into and we are very strong. People can criticize. And uh, we don't do any abductions right now and we have allowed the media freedom. So thereby anybody can say anything. Those days this was not available. For, for you all to even to flash news, uh, you know, even to come to the defense ministry. There were so, so many restrictions. Today you could see so many people came and met me. So we are uh, even even we have uh, we have changed the, the the attire of some of my people who are giving protection in this building. Also, there is no camouflage, uh, you know, uh, uniforms. Those those days it was camouflage uniforms, and they are fully armed here. So now we are become we are getting into the more normal life. So the normalcy is there. So that one can say the, it is very relaxed, you can go to the defense ministry without any problem, kind of thing. That is what we wanted to do. We want to be, you know, as a civil organization, this ministry, to allow the public to come and meet the authorities here. But the military cantonments and the, those uh, establishments are different because they follow the military procedures. That has to be there, because otherwise they will lose their, you know, security measures and the, the secrecy of their work and kind of thing. So we can't, we can't expose everything to public. This office is a civil office, so anybody can come. Anybody can talk to the Defence Secretary. No convoys of vehicles when the Defence Secretary is moving. So if someone is thinking that the, it is relaxed, uh, it is relaxed towards the good side of the story, reconciliation side of the story, peace situation of the country. Well, I think when they, when they get some kind of uh, instruction from somebody, even if I get some instruction now, if it is against the law, if I do that, I'm at fault. Even at that time or this time is no difference. So you cannot do illegal things. You have to work within your, within your authority. Within, your, within, within the command that you received from whatever the authority is. So if the command is wrong, you have various ways and means of expressing it. And if you commit without consulting or without uh, expressing your views on that matter or responding to the instructions, then you are at fault. But the intelligence community, uh, the Secretary, has, uh, there has been concern raised within the intelligence community saying that their morale is weakened as a result of this. How, how do you see that? Well, I think there were some, several cases at the moment, you know, there's nothing to hide about it. La Santa Viratunga, Eknali Goda, and then Jera, uh, Parai Singham and Ravi Raj, and also that is not related to military, but Tajuddin's case. These are the five cases that's going on. 
in that we have not interfered with the civil investigations by the police department, TID and the CID. They are proceeding with their investigations. There they found some information that the intelligence people are involved in these, um, you know, killings or whatever you call it, right, murders. And then uh, they, 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 then they, they requested us that they need to be, it was sometimes the direction of the courts to investigate and, you know, take statements. So they will continue that. So we are not going to interfere with that. Let them, Attorney General's Department, the Police Department, prosecute those officers who are at fault. That I think should not be taken as the intelligence centre, intelligence community, as something to, you know, weaken them. Right? Investigation got to go ahead. So that the government decision, not uh, particularly the, my decision, it is the government to have some credible inquiries and so, this, for our people as well as the outside Sri Lanka international communities, that our you know uh, you know legal system is credible. Our courts are credible. Hmm? Our investigations are are conducted in the right way. So I think uh, this is you know the propaganda of some interested parties more than the demoralized situation of the intelligence or the military. But can you say that? Can you, can you give that, uh, that as defense secretary? Can you say that there is no demoralization within, within the intelligence? I can't say hundred percent there is no demoralization. If, even if you talk to any public servant or a general public, they have various issues, right? They have cost of living issues, they have VAT issues, university students, you know, 101 things happening in the country, SITEM issue, you take all that. You can see the, the entire country, the people have the freedom to express their views, right? Military is demo not demonstrating, right? They can't demonstrate, that is discipline. So therefore, there are certain people are unhappy about it. They have their personal views. That is not the view of the military or the intelligence, right? Even irrespective of all these questioning and arrest of intelligence people, we conduct our duties without any interruption, with the same quality, same commitment, right? I'm sure there are certain issues for certain group of people, but uh, I mean, this you can't avoid, you can't make everybody happy, right? Some people take all these things to the town and they talk about it, right? So that we can't stop. We, we can stop, but we don't want to stop because of the media freedom. You take, you take the media 80% against the government, only 20% for the government, if you analyze the situation now. Isn't it actually reflective of the, of, of, that, the, that the government is doing wrong rather than... No, 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 it is not the reflection of that. Some, you know, when you do something, there is a certain percentage in that particular project or whatever the work that you do, there are certain problems associated. But 80% or the 90% of the work is good. But people are, even the news uh, people, either me, the media people also, take the bad side. You want good, uh, you know, kind of bad news in the front page, so that you can sell your newspaper, right? So this is the, this is the problem. You know, some countries, they don't come out with all these you know, the sexual abuse and various kinds of crime situ incidents in the front page, right? They put it the inside pages. Why? Because that is not the reflection of the whole country. The, this country, the people, the, the men are not always doing sexual abuse. You know, if you say five, six items in the front page, what is the image of the country? Do, don't you all have some responsibility on these, uh, the, 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 the situation? You, you, you are reflecting not the, the right picture, I would say. Give the right picture because this is not good for the young children. They also see the crimes in the front page news. So this is happening. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't blame media, but media also they have their own problems. So they want to have such hot news at the front page and some murders, killings and shooting incidents. And no, that is what is going on. So, some countries, they not, they, they, the media is not allowed to do it in the front page. Those news may be important 
for various sectors of the people, scientists, social science, scientists, politicians or whatever the segments of the society, they need to know such incidents. But it is reported in a, in a, in a I would rather say, decent manner. There has been, a, uh, there has been uh, some, some concern regarding uh, the, the expenditure on, on like, are we investing enough on the military, have we stopped training, uh, like, you know, just because it's, it's peace time, are we letting go of the military uh, infrastructure? Uh, how do you see that? No, I think there is no problem because I have got sufficient budget and there are, you know, we have to respond to some of the offers from other countries, right? So when they offer seven places from China or India or Pakistan or whatever the country, we have to accept it. So thereby now those days we get limited numbers. Now the whole world is giving us training. Those days we couldn't get training from the countries like United States, UK or European countries. But now they, they know the country is in the right direction. The government is in the right direction. So they give offer us. So we have a shortage because we never anticipated this much of money for training. But we have exhausted. But anyway, we have reflected this one to the Treasury. And they will uh, make some arrangements to provide us money. Salama. You spoke about Two questions. One thing is, has, has, has these people been paid, uh, been given that compensation? And the second question is, um, uh, regarding the military, uh, like our, our arms uh, stores, what, what is the new policy? Are we coming up with a new policy? Or policy won't change. Policy is the same policy. But at that time, we didn't have a place to store. It was placed in the wrong place. But there were, even during the year 2010, 2013, 14, right? Uh, there were requests from the militaries to shift these things, but even at that time, the, the people who were in charge of these things, they have not taken any action. There was an idea to shift some of the ammunition to Oyamadu, a rural, I mean, a thin, thinly populated rural area, so that uh, uh, there won't be much damage if, it, if something happens, even. So, policy is the same. You know, we are taking action. I don't want to uh, tell you what action we are taking because these are important military information so we are taking action to reduce such calamities in future so uh, we have already taken action uh, to address that issue paying of compensation and the damages is not my subject because i am responsible for the uh, the, the the incident there yeah. and but uh, it is being done by the the disaster management ministry and the government machinery like government agent and others they are doing it and they have been adequately by now paid the compensation with the news that I am getting reports I am getting so there are certain certain matters to be resolved certain things need cabinet approvals cabinet had approved all the the requests made by the uh, disaster management ministry and ministry of uh, finance they are providing funds so that's going on and uh, one of the, the issues is highly politicized now, uh, the secretary is the land issue, the issue of military uh, uh, taking land in the North and East. <coughs> uh, if you could just explain what Yeah, I'll br briefly explain to you because it's a big subject and our policy is to divest as much as possible. The, the lands belong to the private sector, the private individuals and also the government lands. Whatever the lands uh, we are occupying, we, we, we are going to optimize the utilization of those lands. So we are doing uh, quite a number of things in this regard and we have already read uh, more, more, after this government came into power, I think if I am right, we have released more than 4,000 acres of land in Jaffna alone, right? You know, of course in eastern province only 153 acres of land to be released to the private sector. But whatever, the, even the government land, we are, if you are occupying more, we are planning to release them for development purposes. And secondly, that uh, we pay certain areas, we cannot release those lands. We pay compensation for those things, for those affected people. And also now we are addressing the issues of uh, uh, people in the welfare camps. And uh, we'll be resettling them very soon. And uh, military is constructing 100 houses now. Rehabilitation ministry is doing some houses. So we'll be, you know, uh, uh, 
though there are some problems and issues, but we are progressing very well. And uh, at the moment, we occupy present situation is 2.14 percent of the total area of the Jaffna district military occupied. People think about 30 percent, 40 percent lands are being occupied. That's not true. So we are we are we are progressing in that direction. And I spoke to uh, the, uh, and we actually the two of us were actually in, in Jaffna last weekend. And one thing the chief minister of Jaffna says is that there is still military involvement. That is what they say on that side. Mm. And what the south is saying is no, we want you know that you are, that you all are taking off the military. That you know that you all are taking off the military and are dealing the military. What actually is happening with with regard to the military? <coughs> I think we have reduced the military presence in those areas by nearly about 32 percent. But I think now we have developed a mechanism or a scientific tool, a computer aided scientific tool considering 12 factors, right? And that will give you a desktop exercise result, what should be the strength in every place, right? So that we are doing it and we are updating and we are refining that uh, procedure and we, we will not, you know, bluntly, haphazardly, in an ad hoc manner, we will not do that. We will do it in a scientific way, so that we will have the right number of people at the right number of, right, right place, right? So, I think that exercise we are doing, by that also we can reduce. What Honorable Chief Minister is talking, I think I'm, I don't agree with that, because uh, they want the entire military to take out from north and east. Where are we going to keep the military? In the south. Why exception for the north and east? Everywhere we need to have some military installation for the security of the people. People, I emphasize that word. We are protecting people. We are not responding to the political slogans of other political parties. We have a certain way of doing it. This is a de non-political organization, the Defense Ministry, and we work by that principle, and we will work to provide security for the people of this country and the safety of this country. More than 12,000 uh, LTD cadres being rehabilitated. There are some numbers which have not been rehabilitated, and uh, we are, uh, I think now we are not talking about rehabilitation, but we need to look and look into the issues of the the young men and women of northern and eastern areas as well as the southern areas. But those people we need to come out with certain um, skill development programs and uh, you know sometimes self-employment, entrepreneurship development and all that will be conducted by, not by us because of course that's not our job and let the other ministries, social empowerment ministries and other re resettlement ministries to take up those things uh, in those affected areas.